The AX-1 mission will send four people to the International Space Station on board a SpaceX Crew Dragon. In this video, we will go into the details of the AX-1 mission and the company Axiom. We'll discuss who exactly is going to the International Space Station and how much a ticket to the ISS costs. So let's talk about that. If you're a fan of space exploration, then you have probably heard of NASA, and you may have heard of SpaceX. But the company Axiom Space might not sound as familiar. In fact, Axiom Space, or Axiom for short, was founded in the year 2016, just six years ago as of the time of recording this video. And the founders of this company had vast experience in both the management as well as technical sides of the International Space Station as well as contractors that helped develop the International Space Station. But what does this mean? When Axiom Space was first founded, their goal was seeing a future where commercial companies would essentially operate space stations in low Earth orbit, these being a destination in order for space tourists or experiments and researchers to go for short periods of time to conduct research in low Earth orbit. Now, currently, the International Space Station is a remarkable vehicle that's capable of handling this research. However, in decades down the line, the International Space Station isn't going to last forever. Therefore, they are looking into the 2030s and 2040s, eventually having a commercial space station. But how does this relate to the AX-1 mission? Well, AX-1 stands for Axiom Mission 1, essentially just the name of the company plus Mission 1. And the goal is to send four people to the International Space Station. So essentially, Axiom is leveraging not only the launch capability of SpaceX, but also arriving into the space station working with NASA. So how does this all work? AX-1 will be the first fully private mission to the International Space Station, meaning that none of the crew on board are technically public employees or currently official NASA astronauts. I say currently, and we'll get to that in just a little bit. But what does this mission actually entail? Well, AX-1 will launch on top of a Falcon 9, SpaceX's Falcon 9, and the crew will be in a Dragon capsule. This is actually going to be the Endeavour capsule, which was the same capsule that was launched for the Demo-2 mission back in May of 2020, as well as the Crew-2 mission, which occurred last year in April of 2021. The mission is scheduled to launch around noon Eastern time on April 6th. Therefore, it's coming up pretty quickly here. Now, what's going to happen is they're going to spend 10 days in space. Eight of those days are going to be docked to the International Space Station. But before we get into the details of what the crew is actually going to do on board the International Space Station, or even who the crew includes, Let's talk about the finances of such a mission and how that all works. So from the perspective of Axiom, they are paying for the launch, the capsule, and their stay at the International Space Station. Well, kind of. How exactly does this work? And it's not completely clear because Axiom hasn't fully stated what their finances are as they are a commercial company. Therefore, we can kind of make some estimates from what we know when NASA pays for seats on a Crew Dragon. In fact, it's estimated that a seat on a Crew Dragon to the International Space Station costs $55 million. Now, it's important to note that this is irregardless of how long a crew member stays on the International Space Station. This is just what NASA is paying SpaceX, on average, to get to the ISS. Now, it's also important to note that how NASA pays for Crew Dragon capsules isn't as clear as just buying a seat, as they also have to pay for some of the development of the vehicle. So that's a separate component. But therefore, we can approximate that Axiom probably had to pay SpaceX a similar value, at around 50 to $60 million per seat. And with four people going, that's probably over $200 million. But it's really important to note that three of the four people on this mission are paying customers, meaning that they paid for their seat to go, being anywhere between 50 and $55 million. Therefore, that they are going to be paying for their mission, and Axiom is essentially having to make up for some costs 
for that fourth member, which we will get back to in a little bit. But it's also important to note that they're going to the International Space Station, but it too is not a free destination. They also have to pay for their stay there as well. And you'll see why I put air quotes. To start out, back in 2019, NASA stated that they would allow up to two commercial missions to the International Space Station going forward per year. And this would allow commercial companies, such as Axiom, to send people to the International Space Station. So back in 2019, when NASA stated that they would allow two of these types of missions to occur, they approximated that a stay on the ISS would be around $39,000 per night. However, more recently, partially due to the demand of people that want to go to the ISS, as well as the frequency of these missions and the resources available on the space station, they've upped that value to around $10 million per week. So Axiom actually got a pretty good deal, and it gets even better. Because, as I mentioned, it does cost money to send cargo to the ISS, and that's part of the reason why it's so expensive to have crew there, or commercial crew, for a short period of time. But what does that mean? Well, Axiom are sending their crew, but they don't have too much cargo. Therefore, on their return back to Earth, they're actually going to bring back some NASA experiments with them in their cargo bay. And essentially, this is not only making up for the cost of allowing the crew to stay on board the International Space Station, but it is also meaning that NASA is paying Axiom to do this. So it's essentially like a shuttle service, allowing them to send the crew up to the ISS for 10 days. They will move some experiments back onto the Crew Dragon vehicle, and then when Crew Dragon returns back to Earth, NASA will get those experiments back. So it's kind of a win-win scenario. Axiom doesn't have to pay as much money, and NASA gets some of their experiments back on Earth. But NASA isn't paying them too much. It's around one to two million dollars, which still is a lot of money. But when we put into perspective that one ticket costs $55 million, and that they have to make up for their fourth crew member, Axiom is probably not making a profit from this mission, but more is a showcase for what they expect to see in the future. So who are these four astronauts? Well, first, we have the commander of the mission, Michael Lopez Alegria, a Spanish-American who graduated from the Naval Academy, and he was a NASA astronaut. He flew on three space shuttle missions and one Soyuz mission, and he retired back in 2012 as a NASA astronaut. However, after Axiom began, he became a commercial astronaut for the company and is also the vice president of Axiom. Now, the second crew member is the pilot, Larry Connor. Now, Larry is from New York and a tech entrepreneur and nonprofit activist investor. Then we have the two mission specialists, Mark Pathy, who is from Montreal, and he's an entrepreneur, investor, and philanthropist. And lastly, we have Aiden Stibbe from Israel, who was a former fighter pilot in the Israeli Air Force. And after his service, he became an advisor to the Israeli aircraft industries and eventually became an impact investor and philanthropist. The crew has been training for the last several months to prepare for the mission. They have been working with both NASA Johnson Space Center to understand the International Space Station, as well as working with SpaceX to understand the Crew Dragon vehicle. But what are they actually going to do when they get to the space station? Well, I imagine there'll be a lot of stargazing or earthgazing looking out the window, but also they're going to be conducting some experiments. According to Axiom, there are 25 experiments on board in which they expect them to take around 100 hours to conduct these experiments while they're in space. Now, 100 hours, between eight days and four crew members averages to around three hours per day. So I imagine a lot of the rest of the time we'll be using exploring the space station as well as getting incredible views out the window. But with the AX-1 mission coming up and launching in the near future, what does the future look like for the company Axiom? Well, first of all, they do plan to have more crewed visits to the International Space Station. One currently is scheduled to happen around next year at this time in 2023. But they are also starting the development of their commercial space station. In fact, currently, it's scheduled to become docked to the International Space Station in 2024. And when I say docked, I mean a single module of the space station will be docked. 
Essentially, Axiom is going to start building off of the International Space Station, adding what will be essentially a commercial section of the International Space Station. This will be where if Axiom wants to send people to the ISS, where those people stay predominantly. And then over time, after year after year, they will send more segments to become docked to their region of the International Space Station, and then eventually they will undock and have a different space station. So they are essentially growing from the ISS and building their own commercial space station attached. Now all of this is supposed to happen over the next decade or so, so it'll be interesting to watch all these segments actually grow and build and develop over time. It'll also be interesting to see how these commercial visits to the International Space Station work. Do they become more frequent or are they still going to be at around one to two times per year? Even then, it'll be interesting to see what exactly happens and who the people are that end up going to the International Space Station and eventually Axiom Space Station. But there are also many other companies that are interested in developing commercial space stations. So it will be an interesting market to see what grows and what capabilities are available for research, experimentation, and space tourism. So if you have any questions about the AX1 mission, let me know in the comments below. If you think there's anything interesting about this video, then also let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to this channel. But with all that being said, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.